Hello and welcome to another episode of My Chat With by AussieTheatre.com. Today's guest is a Melbourne-born actor who has performed all over the world extensively in opera and musical theatre. Most notably, he played Pianji in the West End's The Phantom of the Opera. Most recently, he performed in the newly staged version of Phantom in Greece, which was sadly cancelled due to COVID-19. Today, he's joining me to talk all about his new solo album, Kopkino, which he recorded during lockdown. I'm Bella Bevan, and this is my chat with John Ellis. Hi, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Fine, thanks so much. Tell us a bit about your um, time in Phantom Greece and what happened when you found out the show was being cancelled due to COVID-19. Sure. So um, it was an amazing experience. We had a great, um, great cast. So yeah, it was a really great experience. Um, obviously, having done the show, I'd actually done it twice prior. I did it once in German, in Germany years ago, and then um, I got to do it in the West End, which was incredible, obviously. But Greece was just another amazing experience, and it was a new production. So that was super exciting. And to get to work with um, some of the people I worked with in the West End production was really, really great. Um, yeah, it was, a, it was a funny one for me because I did play Pianchi, but um, I've always kind of played patriarchal kind of roles in shows. I mean, I played Old Deuteronomy for many, many years on world tours and internationally and stuff. So you get this kind of family vibe. And I instantly did the same thing in Greece, you know, because there was a lot of young Greek um, performers with us who hadn't done a huge amount of big theatre. Um, and, you know, and there was a little tribe of us from London. So I kind of ended up being kind of like the company manager as well, which was great because I kind of take that leadership role, you know, normally. So, yeah, um, when we found out, I kind of had to let people know in a weird way because we were literally about to get on our bus to go to, to the um, theatre. And I had to call people and be like, you know what, don't get on the bus. I'll tell you in a minute, but like, we'll work it out. And it was so sudden, you know, it was, um, it was literally 5.30 in the, in, the, in the afternoon. We were going to the show and, um, I mean, we knew what was going on. We knew that it was getting a little bit crazy in Greece, but we, there had been no sort of serious cases yet. So when we were told we were closing down, you know, and we were in a huge auditorium. So we, everyone just thought, oh, they'll be fine. They'll, they'll change the seating around, but we hadn't really seen anything. We were one of the first shows in the world to close down. So, you know, it was, yeah, it was really intense. And how did you feel? Were you, were you scared? Um, were you grateful that the show had closed for safety? How, how did you feel? Yeah. So were we grateful? Not really grateful at the time. I mean, you know, you know, you lost your job. We, I mean, we, we've talked about it previously. I mean, we had to get visas and things of certain members of the company were working and living there, um, you know, and we'd given sort of six months of our lives to the show. Um, so, and there were plans for touring and there were, you know, a lot of producers had come and seen it from Dubai and things like that. So um, when it got cut so quickly, that was sort of, I think really heartbreaking for a lot of people who hadn't done the show before because their memory was, was tarnished. Um, but I must say, everyone took it in such great spirit. And so, um, I don't know, kind of in their stride, it was kind of like, you know what, the government has said this. And that was the other difficult thing. A lot of us couldn't understand the news. So we'd watch the news and see it was getting serious, but we didn't know how serious, you know? Um, so yeah, to answer your question, really, really happy that they made that decision and they were so firm. I mean, the, the, the Greek, uh, government just literally shut it down. There was no like, there was no kind of like, oh, you know, we might do this or we might do that. It was no, no, no. It's it's happening today, you know. And for that, I really admired the people that that made those decisions because it was so clear to us what we had to do. And um, you know, many people then sort of flew out the next day, and and so it was quite a quite an abrupt ending to the show. Yeah. Um, and then, so how did your, um, the recording of your album come about then after that? Was it um, prior organised or was it organised immediately after during the lockdown? So it was a little bit prior, but um, I had just turned 40 um, in February. So we're about, you know, 26th of Feb. So I had some friends out from Australia and I'd said to them, you know what, 
after my 40th, I'm going to, I'm going to record something. Cause I think, you know, like the last album I did, I was like, you know, straight out of college. Um, and you know, you take that to New York and LA and get some people on board, you know, that was kind of the thing. So, um, I had made some inquiries and I'd certainly looked at studios and, and, you know, had a chat to some of the beautiful musicians we were working with in Greece and had a thought about some music to do and the styles that I really like, but hadn't really firmed anything up. Um, and actually I was planning to finish up the show and then record when we finished. So it wasn't super stressful. Unfortunately, of course, um, when it all changed, I called the studio and they were amazing. They kind of, so many people were just um, basically, you know, gave up their positions in the studio and said, look, we can't do anything because we're a big, big group. And, and I was only a small group. So um, we were able to space it out and, and lockdown had become serious, but it wasn't, we, no one knew about masks and things yet. It was like, okay, we'll just take it gentle day by day. Um, but then of course, you know, everything closed down, even um, planes and things. So it was getting a little bit stressful then, but I'm super glad that I made the decision to stay and kind of, you know, um, employ musicians and uh, pay for studio time and have an engineer and then, you know, have something to, to work on in the last three or four months. It's been, it's been, it's really kept me going. It's been fantastic. And so tell us a bit about um, the thought behind the name of your, of your new album. Sure. Okay. So, um, I am an Aussie boy, a Melbourne boy um, from the Mornington Peninsula. And um, I mean, I always grew up by the sea and always, you know, I was quite a, a thinker, I guess, as a young, a young man um, and always a bit of a dreamer, wanted to kind of travel very early and, you know, do all that. Um, cut to, I'm now 17 years with my husband, um, a beautiful life here together. Okay, we, we travel a lot and, um, He's not in this business, which is great. He's, um, he's a, a hotelier, very, very prominent hotelier in London. Um, so that's been amazing for me. And he happens to be German. And so, of course, I've worked in Germany a lot and can speak German a bit. And um, I was explaining to him one night, like, I haven't been sleeping very well. My head's racing. You know, I've lost my job. All my friends are out of their big shows in town in the West End and, and on Broadway. And I was getting a little bit like, well, this is serious, you know? And um, so I was explaining this to him and had this kind of reoccurring thought, like just, you know, like an infinity sign where you can't get out of that loop and you kind of break out of it and then you're like, you're straight back into it. And I kept having that throughout sort of about three or four weeks, um, sort of the start of lockdown, I guess. Anyway, um, I explained that process to him and he was like, oh, you had, you had Cop Kino. Yeah, of course. You know, like you had the um, a cinema in your mind. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's so perfectly um, explaining the feelings I've had through lockdown. And I think a lot of people have actually, having spoken to many friends. I was just speaking to a friend in Melbourne just previous to this. And, you know, just being back in lockdown now for another six weeks has been so such a, a mind game for them you know they've kind of come through that and i've watched my family kind of come out the other side and now have to go back into that situation has been really really hard for them i think and um yeah i hope that it kind of conveys what's on the album as well because it's a lot of the songs are very ethereal very dreamlike and i mean i have a real love for like contemporary dance and so you could probably have every song on the album kind of, you know, it's a dancer's dream. And a lot of my friends who have worked with ballet dancers and things are like, well, can we dance for you on your album? And, you know, so that's been really exciting as well to kind of play music to a few people and get inspired for them, you know, so. But yeah, that's where the name came from, yeah. And then can you tell us uh, some of the songs that feature in it? Sure. So um, there's a couple of Josh Groban songs because, um, Let's face it, I, am, I have predominantly been a musical theatre uh, performer. Um, I occasionally cross over into the opera world. Um, obviously in the West End playing Pianji, it's an operatic role and then Old Deuteronomy again, an operatic role. Um, but my love of um, all things music is, has come from a young age. My dad, uh, you know, he would play Neil Diamond to us, you know, and that was kind of like, 
a staple of rock music for us as a kid, as kids. And then um, having moved to Europe, I found myself really embracing kind of European cultures. And um, I mean, I am mad for Eurovision, like mad for it. Like parties at mine every time. Like it's just, I just love it. I mean, it's so cheesy and so poppy, but brilliant. And I just love the whole kind of you know, different vibe, different music. Um, but the music that, that I've sort of done in the album is, um, yeah, okay, a few Josh Grobers. Um, and then there's people like Ludovico Arnaldi, who's a great um, classical modern composer. Um, and one of his songs has been set to music. So um, I'm the first man, I think, who's ever sung it, um, which is really great. It's, it's um, sung by a beautiful soprano um, originally. Um, do you know if you know who Sigur Ross is? Um, I've done sort of their uh, style of music, Jonesy, um, his music. Um, yeah, a lot of kind of film-like or soundtrack music, you would kind of go, oh, I, I know that song from either uh, the BT ad or, um, you know, Optus ad or whatever. And then you kind of go, I've never heard of that, that band before, but actually they've got some beautiful um, music out. Um, so I've tried to play on the fact that um, I am a baritone but I've been really lucky enough to sing um, rock pop tenor roles like Judas. And then um, also kind of, you know, um, I love to use my counter tenor kind of classical counter tenor voice. So yeah, I've tried to like really mix the, um, the genres as well. Great, yeah, that sounds like there's a huge range in there. Um, lots of people can find stuff that they like. Um, sure. And then I guess, now in the UK, there's been some tentative news release where theatres can come back in a way that social distance, I mean, it's still very unclear, but do you have any plans for maybe um, some performances or some promo performances coming up or not yeah. quite yet? So, um, it's, it's a tough one because yeah, of course I would, I would love to. I'm actually heading out to Athens to um, sort of maybe tee up some things with the musicians out there just in case. Um, so I'm gonna try and do that um, in a few weeks time and, um, just to touch the waters and see where they're at because in Athens, it's very different now. They've come out the other side and they're doing outdoor theater a lot. Um, so we could do something out there perhaps. Um, at the moment in London, as you know, it's very, very difficult um, and it's more outdoor theater. I am, and I have been in talks with a couple of people, a couple of producers actually, to try and do some indoor theatre, maybe in some hotels, um, if it can be spaced properly. You know, the interim between um, the kind of uh, coming out of, you know, for us coming out of what is lockdown would probably still be happening in January of next year, perhaps. You know, we're just not so clear on what's, what the dates are going to be. Um, I know this week we're having a trial with Beverly, Beverly Knight, which is really exciting. And, you know, friends are thrilled that they can go and try and see some new theatre. Um, but yeah, as a young producer as well, which I have done a little bit of, um, the risk is very great at the moment to, to um, put something out there. And, um, you know, I even questioned whether I should put this album out, but I'm like, you know what, actually, this is the time to put it out because there isn't much going on. And I have done it in such, in such a way that's, um, you know, revolved around lockdown and revolved around this, um, this time. So it's actually more poignant in a way to release it now. Um, so perhaps is the, is the answer to that. Yeah. In, in the long and short. Yeah. I think that um, an album coming out now is um, amazing. And people are, I think, looking for more content. I mean, even just with TV, um, and film and, and with yeah. music, people just, they, they want content and there's not been a lot produced in the last no. four months. So I, I do think that um, people are gonna jump on that. Yeah, I felt, I, thank you, that's, that's kind. I, I felt really mixed about it at the moment. I mean, um, you know, so many of our friends, as you know, um, probably feel defined by what they do as a job. And I feel like the best thing that I've received out of lockdown and out of this situation is that I'm actually defined by who I am as a person, not about the title of the show I'm in or the character I'm playing. Like I've actually had time to sit in my own thoughts and sit with myself. And um, yeah, I think I've grown in that way that I'm not um, sort of racing to find the next thing. I'm actually kind of 
just happy to be here right now and um, and enjoy this moment. And then when something does happen or opens up, you know, next year, then that would be great too. But um, I think it's about finding your bit of inner peace and, um, you know, being content with who you are and where you're at, you know, instead of, as we often do on the wheel of life, you know, we're kind of searching for the next thing all the time. So hopefully that, that can bring something to, to people. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. I really think it will. Um, well, thank you so much for talking us uh, talking to us today at Aussie Theatre. Um, yeah, best of luck well. with the album launch and um, stay safe and stay healthy. Thank you so much. You too. John's solo album, Cop Keenum, will be available in August on all digital platforms, including Spotify and iTunes. You'll be able to buy the CD from John's personal website or from the LML Music website. As always, thanks for watching.